My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. We shall be taking a look at synonyms. Where's nearest in meaning? So where's and nearest in meaning based on their usage. Usage matters when it comes to synonyms because some words are open-ended. Open-ended. Open-ended means the words can take different meanings depending on their usage or depending on their context. Context. Contextualization means trying to get the meaning of words based on their usage. If I say, I went to the bank yesterday to withdraw my last 5,000 Naira. From that usage, bank depicts or means a financial or financial institution. If in the exam hall, I say, John, why are you banking at me? Bank there means, why are you spying me? If I say, okay, hello, dude, yeah, 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 I'm at the bank of the river right now. Can you come around? Bank there means the side of a river. So one word has different meaning, different context. In these questions, for some, I'll give you the answer straight. For some, I'll explain the options. For some, I'll give honorable mentions. And for some, we'll give real life examples. And that's how it's going to be for any episode that feature synonyms. The handwriting typifies an unserious student. Unserious student. This is a typical of unserious student. It means this is an example of unserious student. So see this handwriting. No, this is a very good example that this guy has missed it. He's so unserious. So option B is correct. Typify means to embody, to exemplify an image, a representation, a model, a resemblance of something. That is what it is. And its synonyms are denote, exemplify, and signify or represent. The handwriting represents an unserious student, exemplifies an unserious student, models an unserious student. B is correct. O Kik Bey was rusticated for his derogatory remark about the principal. For his derogatory remark. Derogatory remark. Rusticated means sent off out of school. Derogatory remark means rude, unsuitable, offensive remark. That is a derogatory remark. And the opposite of derogatory remark is complimentary remark. But we are dealing with words and synonyms. If he was sent away for his derogatory remark, the opposite should be rude or offensive. Let's take a look at the options to see the one that is nearest in meaning. A. Complimentary. Complimentary is opposite of derogatory. B. Lackluster. C. Unwarranted. And D. Unsavoring. Unsavoring means morally offensive, unpleasant or not suitable. So that is the best synonym of derogatory. Justice is difficult to enforce because people are unwilling to accept any laws of sovereignty. Sovereignty means being independent of others, able to act on your own will. So if justice is difficult to enforce because people are unwilling to accept any laws of sovereignty, what is another word? For sovereignty a leadership b autonomy c kingdom and d position ability to be independent of others even if you are in a position you may not have sovereignty you may depend on others for decisions for almost everything if you are a leader that doesn't mean you have sovereignty so you are a kingdom doesn't mean sovereignty sovereignty is autonomy to act independently of others so when you, have, you are in a position and you have autonomy, you can act independently on others. So don't infringe on my sovereignty. And sovereignty is a feature of a state to act independent of other countries. You can take uh, enough laws, do stuff, you are not depending on any other country to do anything. So you are independent on others. 
among many who have said that we cannot conceive infinite space, did anyone ever suppose that it is not a space? Among the many who have said that we cannot conceive infinite space, did anyone ever suppose that it is not a space? Infinite means endless. In mathematics, you get infinity, endless, infinity stone, endless stone, endless possibility. So something that is infinite means it's endless, it doesn't have limit, and it doesn't have boundary. So B is most appropriate. Your effort to bring peace between us is futile because you are biased. Biased is in italic, meaning which other word can replace biased as used in the sentence or from the context. To be biased means to be unfair. So you are biased, you are unfair. You are not taking this matter or you are not treating this situation fairly. So the word that should be nearest in meaning to bias is not clever. Opposite of bias is not clever because you are unfair. The opposite doesn't mean you are clever. Opposite is you are fair, probably. And the synonyms is not a synonym, it's not clever. You are biased doesn't mean you are clever. And it doesn't mean you are worried. And it doesn't mean you are convinced. This is an easy guess question in the sense that it is easy for you to know the meaning of bias. And it's also easy for you to know that bias doesn't mean clever. And it doesn't mean to be worried or to be convinced. Which means prejudice is correct. And to be prejudiced means to be unfair or to be against someone or something. Making option B the correct option. And here it is. Students' success in their exams, the students' success in their exams did nothing to dispel the school's bad reputation. From the context, it means the students did well in the examination, but it did nothing to dispel the school's bad reputation, which means the bad reputation of the school remains. So the success could not remove or eliminate the bad name of the school so eliminate is the correct option to despair means to make something disappear to dismiss to disperse or to scatter or to disseminate despite the success of the students in their exam the bad reputation of the school remained and in the next question my brother initiated the dance challenge to initiate means to start to introduce it doesn't mean to open to oppose, it doesn't mean to win, and it doesn't mean to control. You don't control talent. You are not dealing with physical models. So, initiated the dance challenge, he introduced the dance challenge. And the last question for this episode says The party gathering was thrown into a state of euphoria after the election result was announced. Euphoria means excitement, a feeling or state of intense. Excitement. That is the meaning of euphoria. To bask in your euphoria, enjoy success, intense success. Is, her reputation is without blemish. Blemish means fault. If her reputation is without blemish, and it's the same thing as her reputation is without fault, it therefore means that fault is nearest meaning to blemish and can be used to replace blemish. In the sentence, blemish does not mean struggle or blessing or problem. It generally means a fault. And in the next question, among the many who have said that we cannot conceive infinite space, did anyone ever suppose that it is not a space? Infinite means endless. Infinity, continuously, no boundary, endless, no limitation, limitless. These are words nearest in meaning to uh, infinity or infinite. Option B is the most appropriate option. And here, Okibe was rusticated for his derogatory remark about the principle. Now, one word that Jam and Pusutiemi love so much is derogatory. I've seen up to <laughs> five questions. Testing your understanding of derogatory. Derogatory. 
derogatory remark simply has to do with uncomplimentary remark, unsavory remark, negative remark. That is what derogatory mean or morally or offensive or unpleasant remark. The opposite of derogatory are complimentary. If you give derogatory remark, the opposite should be complimentary remark. So, since you are not dealing with words and opposite, complimentary is not correct. So, unsavory is the most appropriate. It means derogatory remark. That makes option D the correct option. Yes. All the speaker said at the event was misconstrued by the press. Does it mean provided, ignored, misunderstood, or redirected? To misconstrue something means to misinterpret, to mistranslate, or to understand something erroneously, or to interpret erroneously. That is the meaning of misconstrued. If all that the speaker said at the event was misconstrued by the press, it means misunderstood. That is the most appropriate. It is more appropriate than provided, ignored, or redirected. That makes option C the correct option. Repugnant rules in society should be repealed. Justified, exemplary, abhorrent, or enacted. What does it mean for rules to be repugnant? For rules to be repugnant simply means extremely distasteful. Extremely distasteful rules. Repulsive rules. Repellent rules, offensive rules, revolting, or abhorrent. So, repugnant rules in the society should be repealed. The most appropriate or the nearest in winning to repugnant, out of justified, exemplary, and enacted is abhorrent. Abhorrent, which means repulsive, repelling, offensive, and repugnant. Making option C the correct option. Jumoke is just being festious about her marrying a soldier. She is just being festious about her marrying a soldier. What does festious mean? Festious means to be unserious or funny when you should be serious. When you should be serious or focused, you are plain, you are unserious. That is what it means with festious. So, Jumoke is just being festious about her marrying a soldier. Is just being and serious. And the last question for this episode: His class should be commensurate with his intelligence. His class should be equivalent with his intelligence or equal to his intelligence or proportional to his intelligence. That makes option D the correct option. Yeah. I was surprised to see a head of ships. Strain all over my neighbor's farm. Strain means to move in different direction, to move in no fixed direction, meaning they are wandering about. That makes wandering correct. Option D is correct. I was surprised to see a herd of sheep wandering all over my neighbor's farm. Sheep is not supposed to have plural, is it? Okay. The player kept on gamely to the end of the match kept on gamely to the end of the match to keep on gamely it simply means to be courageous to some more courage you continued you pushed until you get to the end so this is what the player does option b says amateurishly amateur is someone who isn't as very experienced skillfully someone who plays skillfully, then stop only. But in this case, stop only, skillfully, and amateurish are not appropriate. Following the const uh, context we are given, this context is trying to tell us the courage of the player. BC has become an indispensable member of the staff. To be vital, or to an extent, irreplaceable, to be so important to be so relevant so therefore bc 
has become an indispensable member of the staff means she is a vital member or very important member of the staff. Yes. That Mr. Sense. Brown is often described as an astute businessman. We are looking for words nearest in meaning to the underlying word. And the underlying word is astute. What is astute? Option A, proud. Option B, shrewd. Option C, thrifty. And option D, miserly. Depending on usage, astute can mean shrewd. It can mean quick, clever, intelligent, smart, bright, brilliant, intuitive, wise, sagacious, actful, brainy, streetwise, sapient, and so on. These are words nearest in meaning to astute. Looking at the option, astute doesn't mean thrifty. In fact, thrifty means provident or depending on usage, thrifty can be used to refer to provident, prudent, miserly, frugal or economical. The opposite of frugal is extravagant. His extravagance or extravagant contrasts with his brother's frugality. So frugal is opposite to extravagant. Astute doesn't mean a proud businessman. It simply means clever or shrewd, making option B the correct option. And the next question before us. Has was a special argument about the government of the day. Specials. We are not talking about specials and not space. We mean specials. So what is the meaning of specials? Depending on usage, Specials can be used to refer to something that is misleading, false, fallacious, deceptive, or unsound. Fallacious or fallacy refer to error in reasoning, unsound reasoning. I don't know Bolobo, which means there is no place like Bolobo. The fact that you don't know the place doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So you are simply saying that because you don't know it, it doesn't exist. That is fallacy and it falls under argumentum ad ignorantia, which is error in reasoning. No, which is appeal to ignorance. You don't know it, you see it doesn't exist. So, specials is used to refer to misleading. It doesn't have anything to do with option C, specials, and it doesn't have anything to do with precious. And if we have to look at the opposite, we can say that the opposite of specials is true, which is option A. But today, we are dealing with words and synonyms. So specials means misleading. She gave a caustic remark on the occasion. She gave a caustic remark on the occasion. Option A, friendly. Option B, tangible. Option C, sarcastic. And option D, insignificant. Caustic simply means sarcastic. And what does that mean? It means a cruel remark, a bitter remark, extremely critical. So that was the remark on the occasion. She gave a caustic remark on the occasion. She gave a sarcastic the first remark. One, there is we a made a pie in the business D. We made a pie in the business D. Pie is in Italy. So what does it mean to make a pie in business D? It simply means to earn a lot of money. If they made a pie in the business D, it means that the business fetch or earn them a lot of money. And if I say fishing is gold mine in Ades family, it means they are successful in fishing. They make a lot of money from fishing. The amnesia has affected his career. Amnesia. If this is the first time you are seeing the word amnesia, Ladies and gentlemen, amnesia simply means loss of memory, not loss of sight, not loss of direction, or loss of focus. It is loss of memory. So if someone has amnesia, the person is having memory issue. And here, Adamo is rather a meddlesome in dealing with his friends. Now, meddlesome means 
interfering, offensive or intrusive, want to come in, intrude, to interfere or quarrelsome. That is what it means to be negligent. You want to put your mouth into someone else's affair. So if Adamu is rather a meddlesome in dealing with his friends, it means he is quarrelsome, intrusive, in an offensive manner. That is option B, being meddlesome. It doesn't mean intimidating or uncaring. And here, the student's union leader delivered his speech, S Tempo. To deliver the speech, S Tempo means to make the speech without previous preparation. And to make a speech without previous preparation means to make a speech off the cuff. Off the cuff. It doesn't mean courageously or accurately or out of hand. So the manager made disparaging remarks about the retiring officer. The manager picked a microphone and began to make remarks. And the remarks were disparaging. What does it mean? Or what does disparaging remark mean? We are looking for words nearest in meaning or the option nearest in meaning to disparaging. Disparaging means degrading. Negative remark. Derogatory remark. Uncomplimentary remark. Those were the remark the manager made about the retiring officers. So derogatory means degrading, derogatory, or uncomplimentary. The opposite would be complimentary remark. But we are not dealing with opposite. We are dealing with nearest in meaning. So that makes option D the correct option. Option C says cynical. Cynical means pessimistic or misanthropic. Then parochial means to be narrow-minded. You don't think wide. You think very narrow, small mind. So option D is the correct option. Here it is. The cynics fear that the nation's nascent democracy would fail. A. Illusionist. Illuded. Illusionist. B. Pessimist. C. Delinquent. And D. Critics. In the previous episode, I mentioned that cynics mean or pessimist. People that see bad in everything. They don't want to see the good aspect. They care about the good aspect. And there is a saying that when you feel like something like this, The pessimist believe that the cup is half empty, but the optimist mean believe that it is half filled. So pessimists they don't see good in things; they see the bad in everything. Those are pessimists, and they are cynics. Option B is the correct option. And this one says his success may be described as a pyrrhic victory. Pyrrhic victory is a victory won at a very high cost. You won, but it costed you a lot. Like Thanos said, what did it cost him? It costed everything. He won, but it costed him everything. So victory won at a very high cost is referred to as pyrrhic victory. That is option C. And here I have some words for you. Incontrovertible means indisputable or undeniable. And delinquent means lawless, negligent, and law-breaking. Then, mishmash means jumbo, mess, confusion, or farago. And misnomer means wrong, inaccurate, wrong name, or inapplicable title. That is the meaning of misnomer, inapplicable title. Then there is something else you should know that I have written there. It is a misnomer to call 3,000 naira a living wage. It is a misnomer to call 3,000 naira a living wage. A misnomer means it is wrong, it is inaccurate, it is a wrong name or wrong description. It is an inapplicable title, making option D the correct option. And when you hear mumbo jumbo, mumbo jumbo, it means nonsense, gibberish, badadash, brigmaro, jargon, agobago. These are the words. So you see this a lot. And you can use some of them to show off. 
mumbo jumbo. It means nonsense. It means gibberish. It means badadash. It means brigmaro. It means dagon. It means agobago. It's interesting, right? <laughs> so that is it. Get the flash now jump application. Practice. See you in the next episode. I saw a question somewhere else. Yes. And it is a jump past question. One does not know when dash would die. A. He. B. She. C. D. And D. One. So, one does not know when he will die. Okay, let's. One does not know when she will die. One does not know when she will die. One does not know when they will die. And one does not know when one will die. Which of the following is correct? If you say option A or option B or option C, you deserve to be flogged. The correct option is D. In Concord, one always agrees with one. When you see one, it should always go with one. So, one does not know when one will die. If one prepares well for the exam, one will pass or one would pass. Not he will pass or she will pass. So, one will always go with one. Just like either we always go with or and neither we always go with no. And look at this mistake a lot of persons make. They will say that the reason why is because even in seminars on TV, a lot of big persons that you look up to, they make that blunder. The reason why is because that is wrong. The reason why is that this is the correct statement. So the fact that English is popular in the society doesn't make it the correct usage. And the first question we have here, the new ruler is big hearted in his dealings with the people. A. Proud. B. Cruel. Cruel. C. Generous. And D. So. One. To be big hearted doesn't mean you have a big heart physically. It doesn't mean you are so fat like this. No. This is the stomach. <laughs> it doesn't mean you have a very big heart. When someone is big hearted, it is used to refer to the person being kind or generous. If you are a kind person or a generous person, we say that, wow, this person is big hearted. So, big heart means kind and generous. Making option C the correct option. Funnily enough, the priest prayed for the robber who shot him. The robber shot the thief, the priest rather, with probably AK-47 or pistol. Now, I would expect the priest to arrest him or shout or because he's a priest, we'll say, okay, since he's not arresting, he's not shouting, okay, let him just probably walk away or to treat himself. But what happened? After the robber shot the priest, the priest turned to pray for the robber. This is unexpected. Despite the fact that we don't expect the priest to shoot back or to arrest, probably, but at least we expect him to maybe move, go to the hospital or something else, or at least talk to him. What is this? What did I do to you? For the priest prayed for the person. It was so funny. So, 
funnily enough here lives unexpectedly doesn't mean disappointedly it doesn't mean timidly not out of fear or being fearless it is unexpected that is what funnily enough is used to refer to and here it is the principal told the teacher to stop browbeating the children to browbeat somebody means to intimidate or force somebody to do something using abusive word or if possible physical force that is bullying so to browbeat means to bully making option a the correct option the opposite would have been pampering but here we are dealing with synonyms and not antonyms that makes option a the correct option Ayodeji is an ardent supporter of education. Ayodeji is an ardent supporter of education. Passionate, arrogant, cogent, and optimistic. To be an ardent supporter or an ardent reader, it means to be a passionate reader, fervent reader. Or enthusiastic reader, passionate, fervent, continuously reading or supporting somebody, or enthusiastic. Some persons are ardent supporters of various topics or various issues or areas of life. They are so passionate about that path or about that habit. They are so fervent and they are so enthusiastic about it. That is the meaning of ardent. The president has mapped out so many laudable projects to embark upon so many laudable projects now laudable doesn't mean laughable and it does not necessarily mean good because something can be good and people are not talking about it in fact these days in the society when you are good or you do good things people tend to feel it's weak people praise evil yes and laudable does not necessarily mean valuable because something can be valuable and people don't even care about it yes it can be a good girl a good boy people will be like you should go and that is actually a valuable habit you are keeping yourself doing right however laudable means something that is deserving praise or commendation so people are praising it wow he's working the president is working look at what he just did so people are praising it so something that is being praised, worthy of praise, that is laudable, which makes option A the correct option. Laudable, praiseworthy. Laudable, praiseworthy. And we look at this. He is a stranger for a newspaper. A stranger for a newspaper. Look at this. Some jobs or some persons, they are consultants. When there is issue, the company calls them please come and check this they check they go back they are not attached to the company there are some persons they write for newspaper or for blogs or sites they call you you write an article you submit to them you are not attached to them you are not employed you are unattached but you are working for them you are rendering service that is what you refer to as freelance or freelancer to be a freelancer meaning you are not employed or attached to a particular brand or company, but you work for them, you offer services to them. Now, if he is a stranger for a newspaper, it is another word to say that he is a freelancer for the newspaper. He is not a regular newspaper pass. He just got into work for them for a time basis or periodic time based on agreed contract. Stranger is a free dancer. Our front door is always kept agile. Our front door is always kept agile. If you have a building and a front door, if the door is always kept agile, what does it mean? A. Locked. B. Sealed. C. Half closed. And D. Permanently open. For a door to be kept agile simply means for the door to be slightly open. Now, if a door is slightly open, it simply means that it is half closed. It doesn't mean that it's permanently open. 
or it is locked or sealed. It is slightly open, which means half closed, not completely open and not completely closed. Making option C the correct option. His plants boomeranged on him. For a plant to boomerang, it simply means the plant rebounded unexpectedly or it backfired. So, if his plant boomeranged, it simply means the plant backfired, not catapulted or bounced. Because it can bounce forward or bounce up and down. So, backfire is the most appropriate. And here, any chief executive of an organization would find radical changes blocked at every turn. A. Developments B. Ideas C. Suggestions and D. Innovations We are looking for a word needed a meaning to radical changes. If you are making a product and within a short time over the year, you've made a lot of changes, a lot of important changes, You've added features, you've upgraded it, packaged it. You are making a radical change. And what is another word for someone making a radical change? We say that the person is so so innovative. So another word for radical change is innovation. Innovation is what is nearest in meaning to radical change. Ladies and gentlemen, teachers of music believe in its therapeutic effect therapeutic effect so therapy therapeutic or therapy it has to do with health at least health benefits even if you don't know exactly what it means but you know that it has to do with health a miracle b healing c sound and d rhythmic like I said, you don't know that, you don't know what therapeutic is exactly, but you know that therapy has to do with health. So, Eureka, sound and rhythmic effect, they are not associated with health. So, healing and therapeutic are synonymous. Teachers of music believe in its healing effect, in its therapeutic effect. That is the nearest in meaning to the word in Titanic. And here, the lamb is a feeble little animal. Feeble little animal. Does the lamb being a feeble little animal mean that it is quiet? Does it mean that it is loving? Does it mean that it is weak? And does it mean that it is fat? It simply means that it is weak. It means that it is weak. So option C is correct. Feeble means weak. And here, the panacea for a country's economic mess lies in systematic planning and hard work. The panacea for a country's economic mess lies in systematic planning and hard work. Foresight, hope, trouble, and kill. Panacea simply means a cure or solution. That makes option D the correct option. And in this question, it says the company is to shed 3,000 staff this year. So does it mean they are trying to demote or lay off or throw up or <laughs> black it? Now, when countries or companies rather drop some staff like SAC, you have to go. You won't be able to continue with you guys because of the economy or whatever we say that they have been laid off so to lay off means to fire when it comes to words associated with business with company if the company is to shed 3,000 staff this year it means they are to lay off 3,000 staff and the plural of staff is staff the plural of sheep is Sheep. Don't ever say staffs or ships, no matter how or no matter the country. Why did the hooligans exchange blows? We looked complacently. 
complacently. Now, when you are complacent, it means you look unconcerned or contented. You are not so concerned at all. So you are complacent. In fact, some persons are even complacent about their own future. They are not even concerned or worried. They don't move as if it doesn't concern them. Or as if they are even uh, uh, contented with what is happening. They just get so relaxed. Why the hooligans exchange blows? We look complacently. Does it mean we look dejectedly? Does it mean we look sorrowly? Does it mean we look questioningly? Does it mean we look contentedly? Ladies and gentlemen, being complacent doesn't have to do with being dejected or sorrowful or questioningly. It is contentedly or unconcerned or passive, making option D the correct option. And the athlete is proud to be in the vanguard of sport development. Vanguard means a leading position. So for the athlete, athlete to be proud in the vanguard of sport development, it means he is in a leading position, not on forgettable position or destructive position or emerging position. Which means when you hear vanguard newspaper, they are trying to say that they are in the leading position of publications. And look at this question. In spite of her grim situation, the young widow smiled dutifully at the visitors' pleasantries. Pleasantries actually have to do with joking, playful, or humorous. Looking at the options, joking or to be formed or characterized by humor doesn't mean sad stories or condolence messages or unkind comments. So, even if you don't know what jocular remarks mean, we obviously know that pleasantries or something related to joke or fun or fun is not sad story when it comes to synonyms, it's not condolence message and it's not unkind comment. So A, B and C have been eliminated. eliminated. The executive secretary has just assumed office. Assumed office. Ladies and gentlemen, assume is different from resume. There is a big dichotomy. There is a big disparity. And there is a big discrepancy. There is disparity between assume and resume. So it will be a big mistake. It will be a gigantic mistake, a colossal mistake, a titanic mistake, an elephantine mistake or blunder for you to confuse them. Assume has to do with starting something for the first time. Now, someone calls you, hello John, send your CV. They look at it, wow, it makes sense. So, we've employed you, this is your office. You are entering the office for the first time to start working. In that case, you've assumed office. Now, a situation where you were working in the office, you took a break or you left. After some time, you come back, which means you were working before, you paused, now you are starting again, you resume. If you are watching the video, you watch up to an extent, you post it, you went somewhere. When you come back, you play again. You are resuming the video. But assume means starting from the very first time. So the executive secretary has just assumed office. It means he just started work. As seen in option C. Now look at some words you should also take note of. Adapt and adopt. Adapt means to adjust to something and adopt means to take or to choose as a new way of life or accept generally or choosing now compliments has to do with greetings seasons greeting nigeria <laughs> compliment means to praise or to commend somebody compliment the e p l e is ability to complete they are complementary. They come together to complete. It makes sense. 
That is compliment, P-N-E. Why compliment? Praise it, commendation. Compliments, greetings. Now, Junior has to or talks to you about somebody's position or rank. If I say he is my senior, it means he's, he ranks higher than I do. If I say he's my junior, it means my rank or position in office is higher than his or hers. Now, don't use senior and junior to refer to position or age in family. If you are talking about your brother, he's either your younger brother or elder brother. Don't say my senior brother or my junior brother. Ladies and gentlemen, elder brother or younger brother. Adapt, adopt, compliment, 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 assumed and resumed. I think that is the message. See you. A good leader is resolute in his decisions. A good leader is resolute in his decisions. Does it mean unbiased, strong, firm, or stubborn? Resolute simply means firm. Once a good leader makes a decision, he or she should be able to stand by it, should be able to implement it. Not today, you make one decision, tomorrow you are saying something else, next tomorrow you change. No, we should be able to stand by what you say, you should be able to implement your policies. That is what it means by resolute. As seen in option C, and here it says, the director's remark was extremely opposite to the issue being discussed. Opposite means appropriate. <laughs> it's shocking, right? So that is what it means. So if the director's remark was extremely opposite to the issue being discussed, it means it was so, so appropriate. It doesn't mean emphatic or adequate or inconsequential. It means appropriate. That is what opposite means. And here, Nobody knew the source of the altercation between the couple. Ladies and gentlemen, anywhere you see altercation, it does not mean wealth, it does not mean alter ego, it does not mean deep love, it means quarry. Altercation means quarry. Add this to your diction, Nori. And here, after thousands of years of existence, elephants still remain extant. Still remains Instant. It means they are still surviving, they are still abiding, they are still enduring, and they are still existing. Now, extant doesn't mean extinct. Extinct means they are phasing out, gone, that is extinct. So extant means they are still enduring, abiding, surviving, and existing. So option D is the current option. And the next question, there are still virtuous women in our society today. When you look at the society, you see what women, what ladies are doing, different behavior, a lot of patterns. So you begin to ask yourself, do we still have virtuous women in the society? Do we still have women who are upright? So the writer says, there are still virtuous women in our society. Meaning we have women with a high level of moral standard or Ethics. Philosophy is the study of wisdom etymologically from the roots name Philo and Sophia, law of wisdom. And it has four major branches metaphysics, epistemology, axiology, and theology. Epistemology, metaphysics, axiology, and theology. Axiology is the branch of philosophy which studies value. It is divided into ethics and aesthetics. So axiology studies the good and the beautiful. Ethics is the good, good behavior, good conduct. While aesthetics is dressing, fashion, beauty of the society. Now, virtuous women are women who are upright, women who are demonstrating high level of moral standards. And that is the same thing as being upright. Says, I have to make my world through the throng of people in the church. Throng of people in the church. Throng is actually large, densely populated crowd of people. So, throng means crowd. If he had to make 
his way or her way through the throng of people in the church. It doesn't mean theme or gathering or group. It means crowd. He was too petrified to give the closing remarks at the conference. He was too petrified. It means he was frightened. To be petrified means to be frightened. Option A is the correct option. And Ogo has often been described as belligerent. Belligerent. To be belligerent means to be aggressive, to be combative, to be hostile. Therefore, if Ogo has been described as being belligerent, it doesn't mean patient, attractive, or innocent. It means combative, hostile. Thanks for watching your one and only teacher from the future. I hope you found this class interesting. Feel free to check out the playlist for more amazing, amazing videos. And don't fail to install the Flash Learners application right now for notes, videos, and questions to meet all your needs. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out any of my sweet videos. See you in the next episode. Don't forget to turn everything around about the Flash Learners. Bye.